20 years ago, the Congress of the United States passed the Clean Water Act for the very lofty purpose of improving dredge and fill operations in America's major rivers and tributaries. An obscure section, 404, did nothing more than say that the appropriate agencies should define the term water bottoms. Well, that was 72. In 1977, a court in the District of Columbia held that tributaries and adjacent lands could also be water bottoms. And in 1978, by a single vote, the Senate included for the first time the word wetlands. And then came delineation manuals in 1987, followed by a tougher manual in 1989 that stretched the word wetlands far beyond the intent of the act and affected virtually every property owner in America. Because what it said was that properties which a landowner could not dream would be wetlands, would in fact be deserts in Phoenix, Arizona, properties in Boulder, Colorado, and parts of my state of Louisiana that no one could imagine had ever seen water in years. It became a property rights issue. It became a Fifth Amendment issue. And it became your issue. The Pennsylvania Landowners Association, in conjunction with the Environmental Conservation Organization, present Wetlands, Our Environment, Whose Property, Part 2, A Call to Action. Let's begin by reviewing the status of some of the cases shown two years ago in Part 1. There's a new America's Most Wanted. This Missouri farmer faces a $10 million fine. Alan Mosley was charged with violating Section 404 of the Clean Water Act and faced a $10 million fine. The government maintained that it had the authority to regulate his property as wetlands and was seeking control of one-third of his farm. On April 19, 1991, Mr. Mosley was found innocent of all charges in federal court. Mr. Mosley is suing to recover the $60,000 in legal fees incurred in his defense. Farming used to be fun for Robert Brace, but not anymore. He found out a few cattails was the start of a long and expensive fight with Uncle Sam. It's hard, and people not, doesn't believe the fact that uh, you talk about a, a four-foot pothole or a three-foot pothole with cattails in it as being a regulated area, but it is. His troubles began last spring when the EPA came to visit. And he says ever since, his life has been a nightmare of legal battles. It's an unjust situation from different agencies saying one thing, another agency saying another, and leaving that burden of proof upon the property owner, uh, it's pretty hard to do. It's expensive. Uh, attorneys are <laughs> very dear, you know. And uh, they say one thing, and you try to you tr try to clarify it with another statement, and, and you just get nowhere. I mean, they want to come down with such power that we haven't had a chance or a leg to stand on. Robert Brace has been involved in his legal battle since 1987, and litigation is still pending. The case regarding use of his farmland is expected to go to trial in the summer of 1992. Corn farmer Rick McGowan is on the hook for $18 million in fines. Do you feel like a member of America's Most Wanted? No, I feel more like a member of America's Most Abused, and I know that this is happening all across the country. The government condemns all this ground's wetland out here, John. And does it look like wetland to you? We're chiseling about eight inches deep. This is a map that the Army Corps engineers made of my property. And then you can see on that map the wetland symbol right here. The definition of a wetland, your water table has to be within 18 inches to the surface of the ground. Uh -huh. And what I want to do, John, is I got some tools here and we'll dig a hole out here in excess 18 inches deep. And we'll just see what we find. We're down to probably 28 to 30 inches right now. There's no water in there whatsoever. The government and Rick are in court to decide if the farm is really wetlands. In compensation for this clearing, the government is demanding $18 million or one quarter of Rick's farm. Litigation in the case of Rick McGowan is still pending. In 1990, Rick was forced to sell his farm because of financial difficulties resulting from his federal lawsuit. Rick now works as a farm equipment broker. This Colorado rancher, $40 million. His neighbor faces a $40 million fine. We've always lived here at peace, and actually I think we were communing with nature, and that's one thing I always loved about this valley, but now we're in a heck of a mess, and it's caused us to take a stand 
and actually uh, start fighting like we've never fought before. It's a matter of life and death for us. We have two things that are basically pretty sacred to the American people here, property rights and the environment. And you guys are at war. I, I don't think there is a war. I think there's a way that... that oh, excuse that, me, wait. Is there a war going on here? I think there is. The EPA was complaining that you guys are putting a lot of political pressure on them. They're getting letters from senators, from congressmen, and that you guys are trying to make them fold. Well, if you think that th we're putting a lot of pressure on them, why don't you look at this over here? This is all of our legal bills here, and uh, they amount to over $50,000. I mean, who's putting pressure on who? And we can least afford this. The government has much more resources than we do. How much money have you spent on the legal Over $50,000, and I've had to borrow money to pay part of mine. You're going to have to give up the fight at some point? Well, I suppose we run out of money. The government will probably come in and take over our property and uh, possibly put us in jail. Doesn't sound like a very happy ending to this. <laughs> That's certainly not the American dream. Larry, Dennis, and Niles Gerbaz are still involved in pending litigation. The government continues to press for payment of fines and the removal of a 50-year-old dike protecting their property from flooding. In federal prison in Florida, O.C. Mills and his son know the government doesn't take kindly to people putting fill in wetlands. We're in prison for dumping 19 loads of building sand to build our home on a small lot 65 by 200 feet. And how much time did they give you for this crime? We got 21 months, $10,500 fine years probation, and uh, we have to restore the property. If you go to my property with my wife, you will see the 19 loads of dirt uh, that we're in prison for. This is the sand here that we put in for our home. But it's all grown up now because it hasn't been touched in a long time. Mm -hmm. And you think it's fair that they got put in jail for that? It, it's, it's just not fair. It, it really isn't. The government spent about $500,000 to prosecute us, and they're going to spend over $100,000 to keep us in prison when the major polluters are out on the street. O.C. and Carrie Mills were released in October of 1990 after serving 21 months in federal prison. The day after being released from prison, Mr. Mills filed a $25 million lawsuit against the U.S. government. The State Department of Regulation and the Florida District Court have since ruled that the lot owned by the mills was not, in fact, a wetland. On December 24, 1991, a U.S. District Judge dismissed the $10,000 fine, the restoration order, and the probation requirements against the mills. Their lawsuit is still pending. Hello, I'm Rhonda McAtee, speaking on behalf of the Pennsylvania Landowners Association and the National Environmental Conservation Organization. For the past 10 years, the issue of wetlands has escalated into one of the most contentious domestic issues in recent history. In its zeal to correct environmental abuses of the past, programs to protect the nation's wetlands came to the forefront of items being addressed by Congress and the bureaucracy. But environmental protection efforts took a tangent in direction several years ago when advocates turned their attention not only to additional regulations and amendments to attain conservation results, but began including preservation of private land as well. Regulations governing wetlands have gone far beyond what is reasonably necessary to protect the environment. They have been extended and imposed upon the rights of private citizens and, in effect, denying their constitutional guarantee to utilize their own land. The fact that a supposed wetland may or may not be functional is ignored. While all of us desire a healthy environment, the distinction must be made between conservation and preservation methods. To dictate no land use to those who have worked a lifetime to own property by spending years of paying mortgage payments and taxes is not only unfair, our Constitution forbids it unless the owner receives fair and just compensation. Legislative changes to protect private property rights, as well as truly important wetlands, depends upon public education, support, and activism. 1992 could prove to be a most critical year in protecting and asserting the fundamental rights of property owners granted by our Constitution. The reauthorization of the Federal Clean Water Act is to be considered by Congress. Forthcoming are some important messages from congressional representatives leading the way on wetland reform as well as portrayals as to why reforms are necessary. Legislative action must serve as the focal point of our efforts to guard against and repel unreasonable government intrusions upon our freedoms.
This is the World Today with Bernard Shaw in Washington and Catherine Cryer from CNN Center in Atlanta. An appeal has been filed in Pennsylvania Circuit Court involving a man convicted of violating the Federal Clean Water Act. CNN's Dan Gifford reports many feel neither the prosecution nor the punishment fits the crime. This is John Pozgai, truck mechanic, refugee from the 1956 Hungarian uprising, convicted environmental criminal. His crime? Filling in part of this 15-acre piece of land in violation of federal injunctions. Land Mr. Pozgai bought two years ago to expand his business. A crime recorded with a hidden camera by EPA investigators. A crime because the government says this is a wetland and filling it in is a violation of the 1977 Clean Water Act. This piece of land is no way qualified as any kind of wetland. Experts say it is, but is partially filling in this land, land used as an illegal dump for 30 years, a mess Mr. Pozgai cleaned up, worth a three-year jail sentence and a $200,000 fine. The jail term imposed on Mr. Pozgai is, is the longest jail term in the history of the United States for any environmental crime. I'm talking about crimes where there's toxic wastes, hospital needles, PCBs. Those are usually handled with a small fine and probation. Equivalent fine to Exxon Corporation for damaging the environment would be approximately $62 billion, twice the company's net worth. No American corporation has ever faced such a stiff environmental fine. I guess we just, we just have to lose everything. So that's what shows you that's what shows you how they destroy your life. The communists uh, come and took your land, took my, some of my father's land, and uh, took other people's land. In a number of cases, they execute people who are taking the land. But this bureaucratic system, they, this country takes it this way. While Earth Day celebrations go on across the country today, a man named John Posguy sits in jail for having cleaned up a dump site. Prosecutors say he destroyed a wetland in the process. Our Steve Dunleavy has the heartbreaking story of environmentalism gone awry. John Posguy saw his motherland rape, and the tears never dry. I used to stay guard duty on the concentration camps and a lot of times I've seen my own people in a concentration camp. First thing you know, the people never come home. Posgai was forcibly drafted into the Soviet army as a Hungarian citizen. And when the Russian guns filled the Danube with Hungarian blood, he deserted, risking execution rather than have that blood on his own hands. He took, took the private land away from the people and he put them in concentration camps. Some of them got executed. Farmers don't want to give up the land. John would flee to the country where old glory flies, to that American dream. But what happened to John has to make us think twice about justice in the land of the free and the home of the brave. There's plenty bait over there, but the way, way I got uh, prosecuted, it's worse than... I would felt better if a communist prosecuted me. This was John Posguy's God's Little Acre, 14 acres to be exact. It was the zenith of his American dream, which suddenly turned into a screaming draconian nightmare. And you know what? A lot of John's problems started with this wimpy little stream. The water on his property runs clearer today than it did before he purchased it. And he was being prosecuted under the Clean Water Act. That is a totally uh, uh, outrageous example of misuse of the, uh, of the law. Now get this. The same law that gave Ivan Bosky 18 months in prison for ripping off millions of dollars of the little guy's money. The same law that will free financier Mike Milken in three years for ripping off billions of the little guy's money has jailed hard-working immigrant John Posguy for three years and a $200,000 fine. I mean, you have drug dealers and rapists and robbers who are, are, are acquitted every day when uh, the, the government has not proved beyond a reasonable doubt the jurisdiction and the elements of the offense. 
John Posguy had saved hard to buy this auto shop and wanted to expand. He bought 14 acres of this land, which for years had been a filthy dump site. He cleaned it up, put topsoil on it, and prepared to build another auto shop. Total cost, $150,000 of his own money. When we bought it, and start working on it, start to improve it, clean it up, and we got it running this uh, government agent, and he says, uh, we've seen a little stream of water goes next to it, this is, this is that land. Within a few weeks, I was up in the federal court prosecuted for destroying government that land. I'm still in jail. Osguy's daughter, Victoria, and wife, Alina, can't believe that this has happened to a man who worked two jobs seven days a week. He bought a piece of property in 1987, which was a community eyesore. It was a dump site. Uh, at his own back-breaking cost, he, he fixed it. He cleaned up the property. He improved it environmentally. And for that, today, he sits in Allenwood Federal Prison. It's affected us in every aspect of our life. It has destroyed us financially. It has overburdened us emotionally. Uh, physically, each one of us have had our own uh, problems as a result. In short, the government said that it was irrelevant that Posguy had paid $150,000 in 1987 for his land. The little stream, which had once been covered with filth and dumped tires, was a wetland, a haven for wildlife despite the fact that Posguy got a building permit quite legitimately and the land is slap bang in the middle of industrialized Morrisville, Pennsylvania. It's a terrible injustice to, to this gentleman. Uh, <clears throat> the area that uh, is involved is really a very low quality uh, area in a highly urbanized area, uh, not not a highly prized uh, wetland uh, worthy of of all of the uh, all of the uh, punishment uh, Mr. Posguy has uh, has inflicted or has been inflicted. With. Wendell Kirkham is a soil scientist for Rutgers University in New Jersey. He has tested the area and says that government claims that Posguy is destroying a natural haven for birds and animals is ridiculous. You know, even if you had a turtle uh, in the wetland area, it wouldn't dare try to leave because it would surely get run over by a car. Mr. Seth Weber was the federal prosecutor who had Mr. Posguy jailed. He is now in private practice and says that Posguy's punishment fits the crime. Whether three years is too long or too short or he's being made an example of, that's Congress's decision. They decided that those guidelines require a sentence. Can you find it in your heart, Justin? Do you feel sorry for Mr. Posner? Well, I couldn't find it in my heart one way or the other at this time, since I'm not with the government anymore. I'm a defense attorney. I think that uh, the law has to be imposed fairly, and that uh, there's no justification in this case to warrant any reduction of sentence. When John Posguy gets out of jail, he'll have to remove the landfill he put in, let it lay idle for what turtle or rabbit might be there, or even let it become a dump site again. He still has to pay $200,000 in fines. He should be taking lessons, perhaps, from Ivan Bosky and Mike Milken, who has proven that crime can pay. I should have granted a new trial, because what they did with me, it's even in a communist country is unfair. Posguy's attorneys say he was so unjustly prosecuted that they're taking his case all the way to President George Bush. John Posguy began serving a three-year sentence in federal prison in November 1990. A petition for a presidential pardon was filed on his behalf in June of 1991, but to date, President Bush has taken no action. The fine of $202,000 was reduced to $5,000 in January 1992, but as of February, John Posguy is still in federal prison. Mr. Posguy's family plans to file a taking of property lawsuit in federal court. This is the 200th anniversary of the Bill of Rights, the Fifth Amendment, the last sentence of which says you cannot take property without due compensation, and denial of use is a taking. 1992 will be the anniversary date and perhaps the most important date ever in continuing the strength of that Bill of Rights. A group of us got together 
and introduced House Bill 1330, which simply says that we should delineate jurisdictional wetlands, understanding that we are talking about jurisdiction as well as wetlands. We're talking about not what properties might meet a scientific definition for a classroom discussion of geology, but what definition would mean that the federal government controlled use of your land. And that should be highly functional and highly valuable and not the same as what might be stretched into the broader scientific term. And the second principle was equally simple. When the exception of government intrusion takes place, then the property owner has to be compensated and treated fairly. We've now moved to have 170 co-sponsors from 43 states. And I urge you to contact your representative and contact your senator and let them know how important in this year of reauthorization of that Clean Water Act it is essential that the elements of the Fifth Amendment, the private property protective rights, and the extensions that have intruded into takings be altered and conformed to its original intent. Your letter, individually, may not seem a lot to you. I can assure you as a member of Congress, individually and aggregately, it is the means by which we reflect the extension of power from the people delegated to us. And it will serve this time as a reminder to bureaucrats that there's a distinction between power and right. The power which they usurped by writing regulations under the act cannot replace the delegation of the rights of people in a legislative body to cast a vote in a democracy. And on this 200th anniversary of the Fifth Amendment, on an afternoon in a session of Congress, we're going to show them the difference. We ask no more than the right to protect property owners from the intrusion of government, but we're not going to accept anything less. Thank you. More and more area landowners are finding themselves in trouble with a host of government agencies over wetlands on private property. News Center 12's Lisa Guyton met one such couple today and has their story. Carl and Claire Fritz are retirees from Atlanta who came to Northwest Pennsylvania to follow a lifelong dream of owning a small farm. But this ditch on their property has turned their dream into a nightmare. On April 17th, I decided that I would need to clean my ditch out so that I would get a better pasture, more attractive, and more productive. That day, the fish commission happened to be downstream stocking the creek. They saw a small amount of dirty water. They came back to investigate it, and that's when my nightmare began. After the fish commission investigated, they decided to fine Fritz $500 for cleaning his ditch without a permit. Fritz paid the fine reluctantly, but the Fish Commission isn't the only government agency threatening him with fines. The Army Corps of Engineers has also given Fritz an ultimatum. The Fritzes could face up to $35,000 in fines per day and possible imprisonment if the ditch isn't filled in by August 30th. Perhaps one of the issues most bothersome to individuals is that of selective enforcement. Many have seen various property owners fined and even imprisoned for alleged wetland violations, and others denied permits for land use where so-called wetlands were said to exist. Yet many are confused when they ride down a local highway or a back road and see another individual engaged in an activity on land that is known to be wetland or appears to be no different than the property someone else was fined or imprisoned for. This certainly brings about a serious question of selective enforcement. It is also quite apparent that there exist two sets of laws, one for private individuals and another for our government. A perfect example is that of this boat launch being installed at a community lake. Approximately two acres of land immediately adjacent to the lake, containing typical wetland characteristics in an area which is known to flood periodically throughout the year, was filled, bulldozed, and asphalted for this project. Ironically, government agencies stated that the property did not meet the classification of a wetland and therefore the project could be completed. Yet the individual owning this private land, which remains dry year-round, was denied use of his property because government agents determined that the property was a wetland. For a system that is supposed to treat all equally, wetland enforcement procedures certainly lack in common sense and most of all, fairness. Due to the inequities and unconstitutional procedures related to wetland enforcement and many of the other preservationist policies being sought by environmental activists, such as endangered species laws, scenic river designations, National Park Service expansion, and many other programs which disregard people and private property rights, 
A program was enacted which provided landowners the ability to display their objections to government overregulation of private property. Known as posting for support, the program stimulates questions from the general public and those seeking recreational access to private land about property rights issues. Posting for support has been initiated in 17 states where millions of acres of private land bear signs displaying objections to government overregulation regarding current environmental programs. Posting for support doesn't seek to eliminate land access, but rather attempts to educate and solicit support for private property rights by enabling property owners to talk one-on-one -on -one with those who often only know one side of the story regarding environmental programs. Posting for support also reinforces the issue which so many individuals have taken for granted. The issue that private property is precisely that, private, and legal entry should only be made after obtaining permission from the landowner. In recent years, many have assumed that merely because property does not bear a no trespassing sign, that access is permitted. This notion only goes to show how much the public has taken for granted the kindness of private property owners. Posting for support seeks to reintroduce the issue of entry only after obtaining permission, respect for the landowner, and the recognition that private property rights merit equal protection in the country's zeal to preserve private land. What would you do if someone took control of your land without permission or compensation? Landowners say that's what happens when the government declares private property wetlands. The property owner was being denied all economic use of the property, which we felt were creating regulatory takings of private land. Last week, Erie County Court Judge George Levin drastically reduced tax assessments for three residential lots designated as wetlands. And in New Jersey and Florida, million-dollar settlements have been awarded to landowners for economic losses due to wetlands. All this seems to indicate support for landowner rights appears to be growing. For close to a year, the Pennsylvania Landowners Association tried to get the support of local hunters. They even tried joining several area sportsmen's clubs. However, they were denied membership. But then they tried a new approach, namely posting these signs at several favorite hunting spots. Needless to say, things started to change. If you advocate what the federal government is now doing, uh, we can't support you with the use of our property. But if you want to join the association, support us in helping to obtain new changes to legislation, we'll be more than happy to support you with the use of our land. Congressman Tom Ridge is expected to introduce a bill soon that would ease wetlands restrictions, breaking them up into three groups. The bill would also define what is a wetland. The present definition includes land that may be totally dry, and when a person is standing on a totally dry piece of land, he has no idea that he's standing on a, a wetland, and that is a regulated piece of property for which he must obtain government approval and a permit to, to do anything with. McAtee says no one's against saving wetlands, but she adds private individuals should not have to bear the cost of a societal benefit. Brian Washington, Jet TV, Action News. Well, an area widow was very happy when she sold a piece of property for $190,000. But smiles turned to frustration when the sale was negated because of wetlands restrictions. Action News reporter John Last has more. The land is an impressive piece of property at the intersection of Route 19 and Elk Creek Road, just inside Summit Township. The land was purchased by a Meadville woman in 1978 as an investment. She paid $150,000 for the property back then, but never had heard about wetlands regulations. She found out about them in a hurry when the prospective buyers learned that no development could occur on the land and the deal was canceled. The Pennsylvania Landowners Association says the entire in, in situation the is not owner. fair. And our concerns with current regulation have been that they create takings of private property because once designated as a protected wetland, the government wants that property left in its natural state. The federal and state governments believe wetlands, or land that contains certain amounts of surface water, actually helps to control flooding. The Landowners Association disagrees. Realtors are also up in arms over the regulations. Donna Chapman of Holland Metro Realtors feels sorry for those who are stuck with land that cannot be developed due to wetlands restrictions. 
and she has this to say to prospective land buyers. A contingency for a wetland evaluation just about has to be on most, you know, sales contracts for the uh, have to do with any amount of land, uh, because if not, uh, you know, somebody could have bought this property only to find out that they had paid a great deal of money for something that was actually worthless. There is hope for property owners, such as the person that owns this land. Congressman Tom Ridge has proposed legislation on the wetlands controversy. Hello, I'm Congressman Tom Ridge, and I need your help. It involves an issue that's very important to you and very important to me. It's the whole issue of trying to bring some balance and regulatory relief to the wetlands management and preservation programs in this country. H.R. 1330 is the legislative vehicle to do just that. You and I know too many horror stories where the federal government has infringed upon the rights of individual property owners, where the permitting process has been too long, where the permitting process has been too expensive, and where the permitting process after being too long and too expensive resulted in your inability to do with wetlands what you as a private property owner want to do. H.R. 1330 is the legislative remedy. It's a legislative answer to the problems with the wetlands process as we know it today. It's the legislative answer that brings a balance between the legitimate rights of environmentalists and the legitimate interests of all of us in the environment and the balance of the legitimate rights of individual private property owners. We do a lot of good things in this piece of legislation. We tell the federal government you have to categorize wetlands according to value and function. You have to give us one agency to deal with, not four agencies. And you have to abide by the Fifth Amendment of the Constitution, that there shall be no taking of private property without just compensation. This is a call for action. The time to act is now because this is the year that the Clean Water Reauthorization Measure will be debated and enacted into, the, into law by the House of Representatives and the Senate of the United States. This is the year if we're to amend, if we are to amend the 404 permitting process, that we have to see that H.R. 1330 is a part of that legislation. You need, we need balance, we need fairness, we need regulatory relief. We need to preserve wetlands. This measure does that. We also have to recognize and protect the rights of individual private property owners. 1330 will do it. I need your help. We need your help now. I would encourage you to contact your senators and your congressmen and do whatever your local organization thinks appropriate to see to it that 1330 becomes a part of the Clean Water Act. I appreciate your help and your interest in this matter. Thanks very much. On behalf of private property ownership, one of the most basic and cherished rights that has made our country the envy of the world, I urge you to make this year an important one. Write or call your congressman and senator, as well as the president, and let them know that you support legislative changes which will eliminate dry land as wetlands, streamline the permitting process, and most importantly, compensate private property owners who are denied use of their land in the name of environmental preservation. You may hear the old remarks that the country doesn't have the money to pay or that the court system should handle it. Respond by stating that the Constitution doesn't mandate compensation only if there happens to be enough money, but rather that compensation will be made or the government doesn't have the right to take private land. Also respond by stating that citizens believe the Fifth Amendment to the Constitution protected them from the unnecessary need and expense of having to go through the court system. Compensation for regulatory takings of private property needs to be provided in the statutes because most citizens cannot afford years of litigation and hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees to find out if they have the right to use their own land. Remember also that property is private whether it's owned by a large corporation or a small lot owner. In the words of Congressman Charles Taylor, every corporation, every development, whether it's an oil company or the Red Cross, has the right to private property and you have to protect it for all of them or you can't protect it for any of them. Thank you. For further information or to send a donation to support our efforts on behalf of private property rights, please call or write the Pennsylvania Landowners Association, Post Office Box 391, Waterford, Pennsylvania, 16441. Telephone 814-796-3578. The Environmental Conservation Organization, Post Office Box 9, Maywood, Illinois, 60153, telephone 708-344-0700. Please take the time to express your opinion on this issue to the President and Congress.
George Bush, President of the United States, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue Northwest, Washington, D.C., 20500. Telephone 202-456-1414. To write a senator, address your letter to your senator's name, the United States Senate, Washington, D.C., 20510. To write a congressional representative, address your letter to your representative's name, United States House of Representatives, Washington, D.C., 20515.